everyone and welcome back. This week is going to be all about fitting Regency bodices. And more specifically, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the techniques I've been developing to fit things like this on yourself. This started out of Abby wanting to do a Regency gown in a day project, which she and I have done many gowns in a day before, so this is nothing new to us, we just haven't done it in a while. And of course, part of that process is fitting and draping and patterning the gown itself. So if you want to check out the actual construction process of the gown, see us put it together, I highly recommend you go over and check out Abby's video this week, but I am going to be specifically showing you the fitting process that I did on Abby, as well as taking that same basic concept and applying it to fitting that on myself with no assistance. So this is a concept that I've been trying to work on for a really long time, and I'm so excited to get to share with you the first time I've ever practiced it. But before I get into all of that, I first want to thank this week's sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a new video streaming service full of documentaries that was founded by a team of filmmakers. Their library of options is full of history content from ancient to modern day and covers all sorts of topics about the world around us. It never ceases to amaze me how connected the fashion history that I study is to the culture and events of its era. And this series of projects has been no exception. If you've ever dropped in on my live streams, you'll know that I often listen to classical music in the background. Since my current research has centered me in the early 19th century, I knew I wanted to spend more time understanding the transitions in music that occurred alongside those in fashion. In Search of Beethoven was the perfect show for this. This history of Beethoven's life was centered around his works and they featured 55 different performances, speaking with the musicians about their experiences. This title was a vibrant living view of such an influential person and time in the history of music. And I am nowhere finished with diving into their library. It has over 3,000 videos on ancient and modern history, biographies and battles, and even science and true crime. There are no ads, and it's clear that every video was carefully chosen by a team who is passionate about these topics. So go check it out now. Click the link below to get your first month free, and you'll be discovering all that Magellan TV has to offer instantly. And thanks again to Magellan TV for being the sponsor of this video. Gowns of the early 19th century come in a huge variety of shapes and styles, all sorts of drapes and cuts and fits, so it seems impossible to have one gown to rule them all, as it were, but in reality, many of them come down to one basic bodice shape. You will actually see this in the sheer gowns, you will see this in the bib front drop front gowns, this very low scooped neck, very often just barely high enough to cover up the corset and the undergarments, and it creates a structured smooth surface in which you can put gathered fabrics over, you can do the v-neck styles, you can do bib fronts or gathered fronts, you can do a solid style based over this. There's just so many different options. They all start with this basic shape underneath. Not all of them keep that lining that goes underneath, but a lot of them do. It's visible over and over and over again. And it really helps the gown to fit correctly, to situate on the body correctly, and it's going to help you figure out how to drape, pattern, and fit all of these really complex styles. So what we're going to do today is start with this basic body block for this era. I'm going to show you not only how to actually drape it on another person, the general process of smoothing, cutting, drawing, and fitting on another body, but also I'm gonna take you through my personal process of how I deal with fitting on myself when I don't have assistance, because I am a stubborn person and I tend to do it on myself even though I literally have someone next door that could help me. I don't know why, this is just the way I've always done it and I'm used to it. So I'm going to show you my process for dealing with fitting a garment on yourself where all of the seams are in the back. It may seem impossible, but trust me, it's feasible. And hopefully this will not only help you with understanding Regency bodices, but other time periods as well. This process can be applied to lots of different eras. This is just a really great place to start if you're trying to not only create a bodice to fit on you, whether through draping or flat patterning, or if you already have a pattern and you want it to fit you correctly. It's not going to fit you perfectly straight off the paper pattern. It's just not common that that happens. And you also may have a gown that needs to be refit. So this is going to apply to all of those different issues and show you one method that can help you fit 
regency bodices or other time periods in a way that doesn't require assistance. But from there, we're then going to take that basic body block, that basic bodice, and I'm going to show you a couple of different types of gowns that could easily be done over this. For Abby, we are doing a bib front or drop front style, so it has a rectangular panel that goes across the front. And it's great style if you need to get yourself in and out of your gown because it's all front closure. And then I'm also going to show on myself what I consider probably the most difficult style to fit because there aren't crazy amounts of gathers and pleating and stuff that allows for a very adjustable fit. Instead, I'm going to do one of the full coverage styles like you would think of for a Spencer jacket or a police or perhaps one of those bodices that goes all the way up to the neck and just covers all the way around. That was a fashion during certain years, and it's a style that really is very commonly found somewhere within a wardrobe of this era, but it's hard. Lots of things can go wrong in the shoulder fit and all sorts of things. So I'm going to show you how to fit that on yourself once you have your basic shape. I promise this is all going to make a lot more sense when I go through it visually, but the end goal of this is that you'll not only have a better understanding of how to start with a Regency gown bodice at any point in the process and how to get that fitted on you correctly, but how to then take that and turn it in to not only a variety of different bodice styles from this era, but also hopefully start to apply this process to different time periods. I generally like to start with the back because it's such a simple piece. We're essentially going to be doing a diamond shape. The actual proportions of the back depend on the year of the gown, the style of the gown, and the proportions of the person. There's no one correct way to do this, but I do like to start with a square piece of fabric, make sure that it's on the proper grain, mark out where the waist is, and then mark out lots of other reference points like center back, figure out the height of the neckline, which can be in lots of different places depending on the style of the gown, but mostly just needs to be high enough to make sure that you cover their shift or corset. The sides can be out as far as comfortable before it starts to wrinkle into the arm, or it can be a very narrow back, which is popular in, say, the 1790s, in comparison to the wide and low back of the 18-teens. This is not a universal factor in fashion, it just seems to be more common in those eras. I like to pull it off, trim it down, make sure the sides are drawn out fairly evenly, and pin it back on so that way we can start pinning the front together. I'm starting with one single piece of fabric that has been split down the neck, and I'm going to start off by just marking out where the top of her corset is, where the farthest point I can go over into her armpit is before it gets into an uncomfortable squishy nerve right there. You can see I'm pressing to find that space. It's sort of a gap between the muscles. And if you go any further, that's how you end up with bruising every single time you bring your arms forward. So for this, I'm not trying to get a perfect image of the shape that we're going for. I'm trying to get a general concept of the overall size and proportions because with that much fabric, it's too hard to handle. It's too hard to get it perfect. So I take it off the body, trim it down into two pieces, which I've now overlapped and pinned together in the front. This simply means that she can now get herself in and out of this mock-up if she ever needs to play around with it again. If she needs to double check that this still fits her, or she wants to make some adjustments to the overall shape and style. I like having that accessibility. We can easily add to the center back if we want an overlap there, or cut the front on the fold instead of with the overlap. So it's really easy to adjust front or back for that. Next, I'm just going to start trimming away the extra where I know it is in the way. You can do this on or off the body. It's really better done on the body to some extent. We're only cutting away big chunks that are way out of the way, and you just have to be careful enough to not nick the person or their clothing. If you need to draw on the garment and remove it from the body to trim, that's okay too. It's just going to take longer and be a little bit more arduous of a process. So if you can work up to just trimming away big extra chunks, it'll make it so much faster because then you're not getting the pull and the fight from the fabric that doesn't need to be there. Most of this process is just working the wrinkles out. It's smoothing around the body. Obviously this is a very uh, hands-on process with somebody else fitting you, so you have to make sure that you're comfortable with that. I do also recommend that you check with the person that you are fitting on to see if they're ticklish anywhere because you will discover that pretty quickly. <laughs> I am going ahead and just pinning the darts that I think are going to be there into place 
a most of the beginning part of this process I don't treat as finished. I don't treat it as this is the final form. I'm just trying to get rid of as much excess as I can, make sure that I'm not trimming off anything I'm going to need later. You can always pin scraps back together, that's not a big deal, but I want to try and gradually reduce down to only the parts that I need there. So I'm drawing in the neckline, I'm drawing over the shoulder, making sure that it's high enough on the shoulder that it's not going to feel like it's falling off all the time. We're going for a standard 18 teens style, pretty nondescript. So it doesn't need to be way off the shoulders. It doesn't need to be way high on the neck. This is pretty generic 18 teens style gown. The neckline itself is going to be fairly low, however, because this is not the final finished form. We are actually going to be doing a drop front or bib front, depending on what preferred term you use. So there will be another piece that goes across the front. This is sort of a lining that goes underneath and holds everything smoothly in place, covers up the corset, allows you to pin to things. It's just nice and secure and stable. So that way the rectangular bib in front can just be pinned or buttoned or hooked to this. This shape though is where I always recommend starting. Making sure that you have the neckline high enough that it covers the corset, but low enough that it is out of the way. And you can create all sorts of forms and shapes and styles over this base. So I always recommend starting with this. I find it to be the simplest shape possible and it helps you understand how you're fitting things so much better. Here I'm trying to decide what sort of system I want to deal with for the darts in front. I ended up with two darts because of the size difference between Abby's underbust to midbust. However, I don't like that there are two darts. So I keep this in mind the whole way through because one dart just was not proportionally working at the time. I went ahead and trimmed away all of that extra so that way I knew what I had to work with. I didn't trim away all of the extra in the back because that sort of side back seam is where I'm gonna do most of the adjustment to fix this dart issue. It's not that you can't do a lot of gathering across the front. It's not that you can't do two darts. It's you can even in this case do a separate front piece and side piece that sort of splits at the neckline and you have a seam and a dart. There are many different options depending on the overall shape and size of the bust. However, I just really didn't wanna deal with two darts for this. It's not going to be seen, but sewing one more dart than you need and it just wasn't giving the right shape. So I decided we could reduce it to one dart if we could put a little seam between the front and the strap. So that extra rotates around the bust up to that other dart, because you have to think of the bust as darts rotating out from the apex and you can rotate that fullness anywhere. That dart can go in any direction around the bust. So we now have technically still two darts. It's just that that fullness that has been created up in the armpit has a little tuck put on that strap. I wouldn't be able to put a tuck there if this wasn't a narrow strap area. If it was across the entire front, that wouldn't necessarily be an easy option to do there and it wouldn't quite make sense. But you might occasionally in historical images actually see a little bit of fullness right there. So I've now been able by rotating the fullness around by moving the backs up slightly and putting that dart there that we can get down to one dart, which I was super excited about. It looks so much cleaner and better. And I think it gives a really good shape. This is also great for cutting because it's going to save on fabric. It's a lot less awkward to cut a straight strap and a front piece than have to cut this very awkward shape all in one. It's not something that you can do on every single style. There are gowns where that do not have a seam there, but for this base start, it's easy to put a seam there. And honestly, you can probably cut this without the seam too at this point. It just changes the angle of the straps. Next, we're getting into the sleeve. I like to start by simply pinning a piece of fabric to the top of the shoulder and then wrapping it around the arm, making sure it's snug but not too tight. We are eventually going to turn this into a larger fuller sleeve. So I'm not as concerned about being absolutely perfect. And honestly, I highly recommend with this as with any garment you're making, cut wider seam allowances and allow for adjustment to a final fitting. You'll see me do that with Abby a couple of times. So I went ahead, pinned out the rough shape of the sleeve, cut away the extra flat on the table and have brought it 
back up to pin into place. Now, one of the things that I did end up finding here is that though I started off at the top and thought that I had cut down far enough under the arm so that way it wouldn't be too much fabric down there and it wouldn't be in the way, but it would still allow her to get her arm up, this is the point where you might start to notice her strap is starting to pull away whenever she puts her arm down. I don't notice this just yet, but that gapping at the neckline is because the difference between the highest point of the sleeve head and the lowest point is not enough. There are two ways to fix this. Either you can cut down the bottom more or you can add to the top. I noticed this thankfully at the very end of the fitting process. And so we do just sort of add a little piece to the top of the sleeve pattern. Not a big deal since this is a mock-up. If it wasn't a mock-up, I'd just be lowering underneath the arm. But you want to have this person moving around their arm, making sure that they can reach forward, they can go up, especially if it's going to continue to be a tight fitted sleeve and they're doing things like dancing or cooking or driving their car. There is going to be extra fullness in some places, especially when you have a narrow back. This back is fairly wide, but the further in the sleeve has to be set on the body, the more you're going to have to have some fullness and wrinkles there. It's just gonna happen. As noted, this is the point that I realized that the sleeve was too short on top slash too long on the bottom. And I decided to just add an inch to the top by pinning a scrap together. So that was my quick and easy fix. Next, we are fast forwarding to the next day where we have been working on Abby's gown in a day. You can go watch the entire making of this gown and all of the uh, frantic sewing that we did for the day on Abby's channel. But for the fitting, we have all of the pieces separately made. We have the two fronts, we have the two straps and the back started. They've been basted together. Some of the edges have been stitched, but we haven't done any of the seaming yet. There's extra seam allowance left on all of these pieces where they join up. So that way, just in case the fabric stretches more or less than the mock-up fabric did, we have the ability to adjust for that. A lot of the beginning process for this first fitting for me is just roughly pinning everything into place based off of where the seams were on the mock-up. This is probably not going to be perfect. It's not going to be the finished form, but it gets it started and keeps it balanced. I want to make sure that I'm evenly going back and forth as I'm pinning one side and then the other side, making sure that I'm not pulling something off. It's very important to keep everything centered up back and front, and it is really easy to yank on one side and twist the whole thing around. So you can put more pins anchoring into the corset, making sure that it's not going to twist, and you can make doubly sure that you're working yourself back and forth and keeping an eye on things being even. This is also the point where I realized that she's cutting the right side and the left side a little differently, which makes sense for Abby. Her right side and left side of her body are different, not only in her bust, but also in her shoulders, which is really typical for people. And same thing goes with the bust being uneven. That's normal. So it may be that this garment doesn't come out perfectly even, but it should look even. You shouldn't be able to tell that it's uneven when it's on the body, hopefully. Obviously, there are some cases where that's going to happen. There's no way around it, but you try and balance things as best as you can. As you can tell, we also did not put in the darts to begin with. That is, again, something I highly recommend you do on the body, whether it's darts or gathers, fit that on the body. So even if you're working off of a pattern that you've started from, this is the way that I recommend you fit it. Make all of those pieces up separately and then fit them all with overlap because it will be a little bit different every time. Your body is very unique and the fabric is also very unique. No two gowns are going to fit the same way out of two different fabrics. Here is where the front bib comes in, which I didn't pattern out specifically because it's literally just a rectangle. There will be some shaping done at the bottom in order to deal with the curve of the bust, but that is something that is better fit on the person than assuming what curve needs to happen down at the bottom. For the measurements, we just measured out that mock-up, figured out about how wide it needed to be, gave ourselves some extra seam allowance, figured out how tall it needed to be, gave us some extra seam allowance, and based it off of that. That makes it fairly simple to just fold over the edges and figure out where it needs to be placed on the body. Sleeves are, as I said, much larger than we originally patterned, so they're pretty easy to fit. They're a little forgiving in the fact that they're full sleeves. So I'm less concerned with getting everything lined up perfectly and more concerned with where the seam wants to sit underneath the arm. 
that's really the main point. Other than that, I'm just putting on these sleeves so that Abby can actually see the whole thing come together, which is honestly a really exciting moment in the fitting process when you've been sewing on this for hours and hours all day. I believe at this point it was now around five o'clock and we had been cutting out and sewing since 7.30. <laughs> so this is kind of a really nice moment for all of us. Same thing goes with the skirt. I did not need to pin on the skirt at this point, but it felt like it would give us a little bit of oomph. The skirt itself is already hemmed and finished at the bottom. I'm just folding over the top to get the rough idea of height. Again, we'll actually fit the skirt to the bodice later when the whole bodice is put together and we can do that final step of attaching the two. Obviously, when it comes to fitting on yourself, it is a much more difficult and tedious process, but I think I have come up with a pretty decent plan on how to deal with this. I like to start off by measuring both my bust and under bust, which gives me an idea of the size of pieces that I need for rough cutting. I then wrap a ribbon. In this case, it's just a Petersham ribbon, something that doesn't stretch or give. I like it to be a little wide, so that way it's easy to pin to. And that gives me my distinct under bust. I then measure the center front depth that I will minimum need. And most importantly, we measure out the back. All you need is a camera. Your phone works great for this. Set it up somewhere and get a video of you holding a tape measure down your back. Now you know from the very nape of your neck all the way down to that really bold line under your bust, what is that overall measurement? And you can visually see how far down before your shift or your corset shows up, how far down you visually will want the back of your gown. So from there, you can actually come up with a pretty decent back shape drafted flat. The reason for the front measurement is to cut these two very long rectangular panels. I like to add at least four inches from that measurement of where I want it to be because we're going to fold down the top. And once we get around to the very back side area, these are going to flare up and down. So give yourself a little bit of extra space. I say at least four inches bigger, but you could probably do more. I'm folding over the top inch and then pinning the center front to my body. This is definitely a case where you want to have that overlapping opening in the center front. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to get this thing on and off of yourself. I like to pull the piece pretty horizontally across my body. This isn't the style that I will end up with in the final form. I'm going to curve out the neckline, but it's easier to work in rectangles. And that's all this is. So you can see if I pull it straight across, it sort of goes up into my armpit and it gets really short down at the sides. So at this point you might go, oh no, this is gonna be a little too narrow. I need to add some height to it. So we're going to be needing to do some shaping. I like to go ahead and mark out where the straps should sit and to mark out the underbust. This way I can even up where the strap markings are and make sure that when I pin them on myself, they end up even. For the back, like I said, it's just drawing out the shape based off of an original or some sort of other reference image. I go ahead and just pin on some basic straps. They're just long rectangles. They're just long enough and no shaping has been done. I'm not sure how they need to angle, so we're just putting one pin in. Then I'm pinning the whole thing to the waistband, wrapping that back around, and this sort of creates a little vest. So it holds it in place into my back and all I have to do is make sure that it is centered up. I don't have to pin anything on my back. I don't have to fight with that. So this securely puts the back in place while I work on pinning the front. You can see at this point, those little marks that I made are helpful to make sure that I have the right and left straps fairly even. Your body may not be even and so you may need to change where they fall, but it's a good starting place because it's sometimes really hard to see on yourself, even in a mirror, whether you're being even or not. I also realized at this point that I definitely need to pin down to the underbust pretty quickly before everything starts to pull up and pull out of position. So I'm doing that, making sure everything's nice and secure along the center front, making sure those straps are placed correctly. And we're gonna start looking at how we want the side to fall. You're going to have some sort of fullness towards the front, a dart, gathering, whatever it may be. And I want that. You can technically do this whole thing without it, but it is really difficult and it creates a very skewed piece. I find it much easier to put a dart towards the front. What this means is that there isn't a singular right amount to put towards your front. It's kind of based off of how it wraps around the bust. And so very often I will just sort of hold it under my armpit, wrap my hand around, push it into place, make sure it feels smooth, that it's not trying to pull or twist. I'm not getting a lot of wrinkles working across one angle. It's just wherever I can get a nice smooth fit on the side of my body 
and enough of a dart and fullness in front that I can shape it out, but not an absurd amount. You will only pin as far back on your side as you can. Don't worry about getting really far back there. Even just midway on your side should give us a good place to start because you have that ribbon underneath. So now you know about where the overlap needs to happen between front and back. Just take it off your body and there it is. The only factor we don't know is how far they need to overlap at the upper part near the arm. I'm making a guess of how curved that bottom ribbon needs to be, of how much overlap there needs to be. This is the thing that we're going to have to fit by putting the garment on and off. My first fitting, it's too tight. I can't get the center front closed easily. It wants to skew at a weird angle. Those straps are way too far into my armpits and it's super tight across my sides. So I'm going to take it off, skew everything out by an inch, just rotate it out at the top. The bottom pin stays in place. And this is an easy thing to adjust as you put it on and off because hopefully this shouldn't be too difficult to get yourself in and out of. Just having that one factor that we're trying to fit for should make it simpler though. I highly recommend dealing with your center front pins that you not only mark where the fold is and where the fold should go to, but you can also make some horizontal marks. So that way, as you're pinning from either the top or the bottom, you're sure you're getting it lined up correctly. A lot of the little wrinkles that I've got in front are just because my pins are, well, not holding the fabric together evenly but it fits much better this time. I can actually get the front closed. Yes, there are a few wrinkles sort of under the arm, but I think that's more because I have some extra fabric in that area. I haven't trimmed down under the arm, so I just have a straight panel going around. So that is the next step to make sure that yes, it is fitted correctly. Just sort of shoving my hand up underneath my armpit, finding the point where it's too high and marking that with a pencil. Do that on both sides. I also like to mark out where my shoulder points are. This is kind of a little bone on top where it stops being your actual shoulder and starts becoming your fleshy part of your arm. It's sort of hard to define, but it shouldn't be way off the shoulders unless that's the style you're going for. So I've now marked out the rough width of my straps. I've marked out where everything needs to overlap. Like I said, I want to add some curve to that front neckline and to the underarm. So that extra inch that I flipped under or two inches, if that's the case, just becomes the curve. And I can sort of pin that flat back on and look, now my neckline's curved, magic. <laughs> it's a pretty simple process where you can actually mark out that neckline and you can mark out the curves of your underarms, trim that down, make sure that it's not causing things to wrinkle or bulge. Like I said, there's still a little bit of wrinkling, but this is a polished cotton. It's going to show every single problem. At this point, I went ahead and moved the entire bodice to underneath the waistband so it looked nice, even and clean, trimmed away the extra, folded back the seam allowances, so that way it looks like a more finished garment. I cut down to the finished placement of the neckline so that way it looks correct, and I'm happy with this. Next, we're going to move on to making a different style of bodice, but we're going to use the original bodice as our base for this because it's going to be so much easier when we have something to pin to and use as a reference for our shape. So for this, it's a full coverage. The back for this, I want to be narrower and higher. That height was determined by that measurement that we took a picture of earlier. So I know that my full length back all the way up to the top of the nape of my neck is 10 inches, super simple. And I can see from my previous back that I want to just make it a little bit more narrow, but I can see where the shape ideally falls for my back. And then I'm just gonna cut that out and pin it to the mock-up, which now means I can put it on and keep it secure. The front I'm starting off just like we did with Abby's with two pieces pinned together at the middle. I went ahead and did it this way rather than the single piece that I started on Abby, just so I can get this on and off of me more easily, pinning it at the base and making sure that the center front is only pinned as far up as my neck needs to go. Otherwise it's gonna get real complicated real fast. Don't pull it really tight as we're working on it. That's gonna make the front bunch up. So you wanna give some extra space and then pin across to your straps, across the upper part of the chest. It will hold everything into place on your mock-up. Ideally, you're only pinning to the other mock-up. You're not pinning to your corset or your shift. You might have to fix that later, but it's okay. I ended up getting this a little bit uneven in my pinning process, so do double check as you're going that you are level and that your center front is actually going straight up and down. I'm just working down and around the armpit just like we did on our previous mock-up. So now we have something to pin directly to, something to smooth over. The angle here is going to be much more picky than when we were dealing with the completely rectangular pieces. So this will definitely let you know if you've gone too far or not far enough with lots of wrinkles. 
Again, just sort of pinning darts into place. It's not perfect, but it's good enough to get the fullness out of the way. I'm also going up and pinning on top of the shoulders. This is something that's a little bit difficult to do since as you move your arms, they're going to shift things around. I'm trying to smooth, hold it down with my hand and then pin from there. The neckline can also be marked, which I do have to note at this point, I realized I had folded the neckline under and gotten it pinned to everything else. So I had to flip that out. So just kind of like bunch the neck extra up around your neck and mark it. Then we're going to take the whole thing off and use the first mock-up as reference for cutting because we know where the underarm needs to be. We know where the armhole sits at the front. We know overall shapes based off of that garment. So I'm just going to mark those out with a pencil. We've gotten everything pinned down nicely and then I will fold the first mock-up out of the way and sort of just extend those lines with a lot of extra given. I want to curb them way out of the way so that we've got lots of extra fabric to work with, but now we've cut out our armhole and we know it's going to fit in the front and underneath the arm. So that's a really simple process working over a bodice that I already know fits pretty well. And then I can lay it back down on the table, pin it flat in place, making sure to smooth it out in the area that I couldn't reach on myself. And I will now know where the fronts and the backs overlap without having to do it on my body. This is also a great way to deal with shaping out a back if you really don't know what you want it to look like. So you can cut a back that's big enough to cover you without putting the final shape into it and make sure that your fronts are large enough that when you pull it off your body like this, you can decide what you want it to look like. So you can alter that and change that option here. I then go to cutting out that neck, same sort of thing. I have that front to side formed and then I just sort of continue a circle on around. I do kind of wish that I had given myself more of a circle rather than just lobbing off a teardrop shape. So I would generally cut that a little higher up. I didn't think I needed to and I only ended up about a quarter of an inch short on the pattern. So it's not a big deal. I then try everything back on before finishing out the shoulders. I want to make sure that the body is correct. One of the places that you might see a problem is at the upper part of the chest. If you have a lot of fullness at that upper chest area, you might find that you have tension across. I don't have very much here. I'm sort of puffing out my chest to give you an idea of what might happen. The best way to fix this isn't to change the front edge. You don't want to put a curve into it. It's to essentially rotate the pattern up. So you can see as I'm pulling up and in, it sort of gets rid of that. It pushes the extra there. So we're just going to use that bust point rotation that we talked about earlier and take out a little bit of the dart, rotate the side section of your front up and you'll end up with a little more fullness in that area. Once we're sure that the body fits correctly, we're sure that there's no pulling or dramatic things happening across the bust, we're going to work on those shoulders. I like to go ahead and unpin the back part of the shoulders of our first mock-up so that way I can work flat, nicely smoothing out our new piece of fabric over that flat strap, pinning the flat strap back on, which again, it's not necessarily going to be a perfect system because that strap can kind of wiggle back and forth. Even if you have two pins, it's so narrow that it's probably not going to give you as picky of a fit as the full coverage bodice will. So we're going to work on this for a little bit. It's okay. It's very likely not going to be perfect the first time, but I'm going to walk you through some of the problems you are likely to see when you do this. I'm just going ahead and pinning out where I think it needs to fit, which is pretty close. It ended up being a little snug on me. So ideally I would be adding about a quarter of an inch, just releasing it slightly. You can see that there's some wrinkles across my shoulders, particularly right in the center part. It's pulling too tightly. The next question is, how do you know that's all it is? How do you know it's not in the wrong position? How do you know that it's not incorrect some other way? Well, that's what we're going to show. So this bodice has two wrong things down the shoulders. The first one, I moved the shoulder up and in. So all it did was on the same seam lines, I just scooted it up towards my neck by an inch. And you can start to see that there are pull lines going from my armpit to the center back of my neck. There are these wrinkles running across there. That means that I have shortened that distance too much. I've taken the distance and pulled it too far up into my neck. The other side is the opposite. I've put it too far out on my shoulder. I'm getting a little bit of wrinkle down the center and the wrinkles actually want to run from the top of my shoulder towards the center of my bust. 
So I'm getting wrinkles that direction instead. So again, the wrinkles tell us where we've pulled too tight. You can also see it looks almost too big over my arm. So the wrinkle direction is showing us where we've yanked it too far. So you can see if I pull it, wrinkles more. If I pull it out, the wrinkles go away. Same thing on that side. The wrinkles go away when I pull it up towards my neck like it should be and the wrinkles return if I pull it out. So you can see from the back how I just slid those two up or down depending on the different sides. And that's the incorrect fit that you will find. Those are the wrinkles that you will find for this or really any garment. This is not singular to Regency things. Once I unpinned the front, you can really see the front wants to skew over to the side. The neckline is huge and bulging from the front of the piece that is pulled too far up to the neck. And the whole center front wants to go way off. And you can actually see the wrinkles even more now that I've unpinned it. They go all the way down to the center front of the bust. For this next one, I added some to the seam allowance on the shoulder on my right arm. And I added some to the neck area on my left arm. So neither of these are too tight, they're too loose. And you can see it when I turn around and it's sticking out at the seam from my neck. That one's a little bit more obvious that there's just too much in that seam right there, but it's still good to see how it can affect the overall fit of the bodice. him doing it but yes we have that wasn't us <laughs> that was a griffy toot <laughs> that was a good one it wasn't as high pitched as it can be but oh are you ashamed now it's so funny when he looks at his butt he's like oh, who was that who did that who tooted not me he did it last night and it was like it was one of those and he was like 